Naples is located in southern Italy, in the Campania region, on the shores of the Tyrrhenian Sea. It's a vibrant city, full of history, culture, and a cuisine that has conquered the world. But few know that this Italian metropolis was literally built on top of one of the most dangerous supervolcanoes on the planet. Just a few miles from the city's historic center, there exists an area known as the Flegrean Fields, or Campi Flegre in Italian, which literally means burning fields. This name was not given by chance. Since ancient times, the Romans had already observed steam rising from the ground, bubbling thermal springs, and the strong smell of sulfur that characterized that landscape. For them, that place was the entrance to the underworld, the gate of hell mentioned in ancient legends. The geological history of the Flegrean Fields is absolutely terrifying. Approximately 39,000 years ago, this supervolcano was the protagonist of one of the most catastrophic eruptions that Earth has ever witnessed. Scientists estimate that that explosion was so violent that it launched enough volcanic material to cover an area equivalent to all of Spain's territory with a layer of ash. The sky over Europe darkened for months, temperatures plummeted drastically, and archaeological evidence suggests that this event may have contributed to the extinction of entire populations of Neanderthals that inhabited the European continent. We are not talking about a simple volcano. We are talking about a gigantic caldera approximately 8 miles 13 kilometers, in diameter, capable of altering the global climate and redefining the course of human civilization. But the story doesn't end there. 15,000 years ago, the Phlegraean fields roared again with devastating force. The second great eruption completely reshaped the geography of the Bay of Naples, creating craters that are now lakes, modifying the coastline, and leaving layers of volcanic rocks that geologists still study to understand the magnitude of that event. For centuries, this giant remained relatively quiet, with only small episodes of activity. The last recorded eruption occurred in 1538, when a new mountain called Monte Nuovo emerged in just one week of explosive activity. At that time, Naples was a small city, and the number of victims was limited, but today, the situation is radically different. And here is the point that keeps volcanologists around the world awake at night. In the last two decades, and especially in the last two years, the Phlegraean fields have begun to give disturbing signs that something is changing in the depths. More than 3,000 earthquakes have shaken the region in just one recent year. The ground is rising in an accelerated manner, rising more than three feet, one meter, in some areas since 2005. Volcanic gases are escaping through fissures in the ground in volumes that have not been observed for decades. Italian authorities, including the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, are monitoring every tremor, every inch of ground elevation, every change in the chemical composition of gases. And the more data they collect, the clearer a disturbing reality becomes. This supervolcano is not extinct. It was just sleeping, and now it is beginning to awaken. The recent numbers are impressive and worrying. According to official data from the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology of Italy, between 2022 and mid-2025, more than 50,000 microearthquakes were recorded in the Phlegraean Fields region. Many of these tremors are so small that people don't even feel them, but high-precision scientific instruments can detect them. And here is the alarming detail. The majority of these earthquakes are occurring at very shallow depths, around two to two and a half miles, three to four kilometers, below the surface. This means that the seismic activity is not happening in the depths of the Earth's mantle, but right there, practically underneath the streets, houses, and buildings where millions of people live their daily lives. On the 30th of June, 2025, something unprecedented happened. An earthquake of magnitude 4.6 on the Richter scale shook the region, becoming the strongest tremor ever recorded in the Phlegraean fields since modern monitoring began. Windows shattered, cracks appeared in walls of old buildings, schools needed to be evacuated temporarily, and thousands of residents ran to the streets in panic. Many families spent the night sleeping inside cars or in emergency shelters, afraid that their homes could collapse if another tremor occurred. For those who live there, each tremor carries a terrifying question. Is this just another common seismic shock? Or is it the sign that something much bigger is about to happen? But the earthquakes are only part of the puzzle. The phenomenon called Bradyseism, which is the slow rising and sinking of the ground, is occurring in an accelerated manner in the Phlegraean fields. Since 2005, some areas of the caldera have risen approximately four and a half feet, one meter and 40 centimeters. 
It may not seem like much at first glance, but for scientists, this movement is extremely significant. It's as if the ground is being pushed upward by something gigantic that is expanding in the depths, that something is a combination of moving magma and volcanic gases under increasing pressure. Imagine a pressure cooker on the stove with a blocked valve. The pressure keeps increasing, increasing, until eventually something has to give. And then we have the gases. In the Solfatara zone, one of the most active areas of the Phlegraean fields, scientific sensors are recording carbon dioxide emissions in the order of 4,000 to 5,000 tons per day. This is one of the largest volcanic gas flows recorded anywhere on the planet currently. Along with carbon dioxide, increasing amounts of sulfur dioxide and other gases that are typical when magma is rising toward the surface are also being detected. For volcanologists, these gases are like messages coming from the depths of the earth. Chemical signals indicating that the magmatic system is active and possibly reorganizing. Recently, researchers made another disturbing discovery. Using artificial intelligence to analyze old seismic data, they identified thousands of micro-earthquakes that had gone unnoticed by traditional analysis methods. Additionally, subsurface imaging studies revealed the existence of a large hidden fracture or cavity in the depths of the caldera. This crack appears to connect deep zones where magma accumulates with more superficial faults. In other words, it may function as a type of channel that allows pressure to propagate unexpectedly through the system. Some scientists compare the current situation to walking on thin ice. You may not realize it's breaking until it's too late. All these signs, when analyzed together, point to an inevitable conclusion. The Phlegraean fields are undergoing profound changes. The possibility of an eruption is no longer a question of if, but of when. Oh, Dirt, so what would really happen if the Phlegraean fields erupted? Let's start with the most optimistic scenario, which even so is not at all comfortable. A small-scale eruption, similar to the event of 1538 that created Monte Nuovo, would already be enough to cause significant destruction. Entire neighborhoods could be buried under ash and pyroclastic material. Naples would be covered by a thick layer of volcanic ash that would completely paralyze the city. Airports would close immediately, roads would become impassable, electrical systems would collapse, and hundreds of thousands of people would need to be evacuated within hours. And that would be just the beginning of the problems. But scientists warn that there is the possibility of something much, much worse. The Phlegraean fields are classified as a supervolcano, which means they have the capacity to produce eruptions of truly apocalyptic scale. In the most extreme case, a super eruption could expel more than 240 cubic miles, 1,000 cubic kilometers, of volcanic material into the atmosphere. To put this in perspective, it would be more than 100 times the volume of material that Mount Vesuvius launched in the year 79 AD when it destroyed the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum. An eruption of this magnitude would not only devastate Italy, clouds of volcanic ash would spread throughout Europe, paralyzing air traffic for weeks or even months poisoning agricultural fields and contaminating water sources. But there is an even more terrifying effect that few people know about, volcanic winter. When a supervolcano erupts, billions of tons of sulfur dioxide are launched into the stratosphere. This gas reacts with the moisture in the air and forms tiny droplets of sulfuric acid that remain suspended in the upper atmosphere, forming a kind of veil around the planet. This veil reflects sunlight back into space drastically reducing the amount of energy that reaches the Earth's surface. Global temperatures can drop several degrees Celsius, the growing seasons of agricultural crops are shortened, harvests fail en masse, and food production plummets on all continents. History has already shown us what this means. In 1815, the eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia caused what became known as the year without a summer. Harvests failed throughout Europe, famine spread, Epidemics multiplied, and millions of people suffered the consequences of a single volcanic eruption on the other side of the world. So what is being done to prepare for this threat? The Italian government has invested considerable resources in monitoring systems. Thousands of seismic sensors have been installed throughout the Phlegraean Fields region, recording every small tremor. Volcanic gas measurement stations operate 24 hours a day, analyzing chemical emissions. Satellites in orbit measure with millimeter precision any elevation or sinking of the ground. Teams of scientists drill deep wells to collect rock samples and study the chemistry of the volcanic system. 
Civil protection authorities have developed detailed evacuation plans to remove up to 500,000 people from the highest risk zones if necessary. And now I want to hear from you. What do you think about this situation? Is humanity really prepared to face a super volcano eruption? And if you want to continue exploring the mysteries and hidden forces that shape our planet, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell. That way you won't miss any new content that's coming. Because one thing is certain, Earth still has many stories to tell, and we'll be here to share each one of them with you. Until the next video, 